Hi everybody, let's now focus on the limitations to supply side reforms in Zambia. Well, a key problem is that of resource nationalisation. Uh, this is where the Zambian government is intervening very strongly in business operation by taking a majority share in the operation of mining companies, for example, and taking away a majority of the profits made by mining companies. Why? Because the Zambian government is worried about tax collection, is worried about tax evasion, so they see this as an easy way to control the amount of tax revenue they get from these mining companies. Um, the problem with this is that it destroys incentive to invest, destroys incentive for foreign investment to come into Zambia and operate. It destroys the incentive for domestic business to, to grow and prosper, knowing that the government may just intervene and have a heavy hand to play in your business, which could actually uh, reduce the success of supply side reforms and, and see them not um, be successful in the ways that they're intending to work. But also, it could actually lead to a relocation of FDI, it could lead to domestic businesses shutting down, which could actually restrain and reduce long-run growth in the future. The cost of certain supply-side reforms might be very, very high. Take government spending on infrastructure, for example. And we know that the Zambian economy is not very efficient, sorry, the Zambian government is not very efficient at collecting taxes, so how is it going to fund something like infrastructure spending? Well, it's going to have to borrow money to do so, and that means taking up a lot of debt with debt interest on top. Now, that means in the future that taxes may need to rise, like corporation tax, and if that does happen, then again you destroy some of the incentives to invest and therefore you reduce the potential of long-run growth uh, being persistent in the long term. Uh, some reforms are not guaranteed to work and some may even take a very long time if they are going to work. Let's take economic zones as an example of a reform which may not work as intended. The problem with economic zones uh, in Zambia is that yes, the incentives to operate business are strong, but only in the short run. As soon as your business makes profits for more than five years, then the amount of corporation tax you need to pay is way more than the, than the normal rate. You have to pay a uh, corporation tax of 50% from years, um, from years, I think it's six and seven, you have to pay a 50% corporation tax rate. And then after that, any profits you make are taxed at 75%. These are significantly high corporation tax rates. So the short-term incentives are there, but the long-term incentives aren't there. So that's the concern. And if entrepreneurs see through this policy, they might deter them from actually setting up business in these zones. And some policies may take a very, very long time to work. Take government spending on infrastructure. That's going to take a very, very long time for these projects to complete, for costs for businesses to reduce, uh, for FDI to be promoted. It's going to take a huge amount of time. Finally, last two points to consider. Um, certain deregulation might not be to the benefit of the populace. You take a relaxation of hiring and firing laws, for example. You take a relaxation of environmental laws. Uh, that could actually lead to a, a reduction in living standards and a reduction in the well-being of the ordinary Zambian citizen. I mean, long-run growth may be promoted because the cost of doing business comes down, it's easier to do business, that increases productive efficiency, that shifts LRS, it promotes long-run growth, yeah. But if that long-run growth is actually not benefiting the population, it's leading to a reduction in living standards, it's leading to lower welfare, lower well-being, what's the point in that growth being promoted, right? That's a nice argument to make. And also, if FDI is encouraged through these supply side reforms. What might these companies do? Well, they may worsen the environment, like we just mentioned. That's not good for the prosperity and well-being of the Zambian citizen. But they may strip resources, i.e. copper and cobalt, extract them at such high pace, sell them, export them, and then leave when these resources are depleted. And that means in the long run, these resources are not there to tap into for growth to be promoted. That's not good at all for persistent long-run growth in the Zambian economy. So these are all big limitations for you to talk about in an essay uh, on this topic. Uh, talk about it well, remember to develop your detail, write in serious detail and to apply at all times, given what's in the extract. Thanks for watching guys, see you all in the next video.